Hi. Today we're going to turn this ordinary red fabric into single welt cord. First thing I will do is turn this over to the back side of the fabric. Again, that way if you make a mistake, you haven't ruined the face of your fabric. So we'll pull this back a little bit. And you can see the back side of my fabric is not red. It's kind of an off-white color. There we go. Now we have our cord stick here. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do the cording straight across, or you can do it on the bias. Now if you do a 45 degree bias, that tends to waste a lot of fabric because you've got these great big triangles. So most upholsters do what is called a 60 inch bias. That is, they put the cord stick on a slant like this, such that it goes all the way across the bolt of fabric. So it's not a 45 degree, but it still has a little bit of a bias. Why do you want to do it on a bias? Because if you do it on a bias, your cording is a little more flexible and it tends not to kink up around corners and things and, and curves. So it's real simple. You're just going to take your writing instrument. In this case, I'm using a Sharpie marker. I'm drawing a line all the way across and then another line all the way across. Then we just simply move it over to the next line and draw across. So there's five strips on a 60 inch bias. Each of those strips are exactly an inch and a half wide, which is the width of our uh, cording stick here. The one thing I like to do too is on the left hand side, draw a couple lines across here. The reason you want to do that is because when you go to sew these pieces of strips together, you always want to sew a strip with, with a line to a side without a line. And if you do that, then you've always got the pattern upright. Some fabrics, such as chenilles, velvets, they have a nap. And if you don't connect the side with a line to the side without a line, what happens when you look down on it, you'll see cord and it looks deep and dark, and then all of a sudden where the seam is, it changes to shiny. So it's a nice little practice. Then, of course, the next thing you have to do is to take your scissors, and Leslie will probably edit a little bit of this, but you'll cut out your strips. So here I go. So make sure you follow your line so that you get a consistent one and a half inch cord. So we're here in our workroom, and Bernie is going to use our industrial sewing machine to show you how to sew the single welt cording. So we do have a cord foot in here. You want to put some thread that's close to the color of your fabric. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, but something that's close. So here's our cording now, and uh, here's the side that has the marks on it. You can see there in the T-pin. I'm just going to lay this across my lap. Here's our 532nd tissue welt. So the first thing we have to do, we're not going to use the welt right away. The first thing we have to do is to sew our pieces of fabric, our strips of fabric, uh, together. Now it's caught on that pin there. There we go. Okay, so I'll take the pin out. I'll leave all the marked side on my right side and the unmarked on my other side. So I'm going to take my first piece here. I'm going to go to the side that doesn't have the mark over here and I'm going to lay it down face up. Okay. Then I'm going to take the side with the mark and then I'm going to lay it at a 90 degree angle across here. Again, our Singer Upholstery Basics book, uh, they do show you how to do this. The key is that this must be exactly 90 degrees. So I let them cross each other, so it sort of looks like a multipl multiplication symbol. And then the key is, you want to sew directly, once you got it at 90 degree angle, you're going to sew directly across the V, the two Vs, if you will. A regular V and an upside down V. So I'm going to sew right across that line. I don't normally draw the line, but I just did it so that you can see. When you do this, you want to put your stitches at fairly narrow so you don't have to do a back stitch. So you just run it across there. Now leave it in the machine and take your next piece and do the same thing. Lay it across so it's face up. Then take your next piece that has the mark, lay it again at a 90 degree angle and go across. We'll do it again. And we'll keep going until we've got all the pieces connected together. 
Again, it's exactly a 90 degree. We so from the V to the V. The letter V, I guess you could say. All the way across. Now, if you're not experienced with sewing and you have trouble keeping it at a 90 degree angle, you can do it this way, which is just to put it face down, straight across, and to bring the next one also face straight across. Most upholsters consider this first method to be superior because it distributes the bulk of the fabric across a larger width and you don't notice it as much. But this also works and generally doesn't look too bad either. You just go straight across if you want to. Okay, so now I've got five strips you can see sewed together. These three, or these three pair, are sewed together at the 90 degree angle. This last one I just sewed straight across, but it'll work too. So you can take your scissors now and just cut a little bit past the stitch line, about a half now inch. Now I have to just take the scissors and cut between these, and I'll just temporarily put it in this, I just cut it here cut it. And so now you see we have a nice really long strip that's composed of five strips of fabric. Now we're ready to encase the cord. So in the you fabric. just take the fabric and you fold it over the cording so it's folded directly in half like so. Then you'll take it and put it underneath the cording foot and you can use a pretty big stitch with this cording. So I'm putting it up to a nine on this machine and then usually you can sew from about the needle to the edge of the counter so you fold it directly in half like so you can pull a little bit on the cord if you want to keep it straight and you can put your left hand in the middle to help guide and there you go you're sewing cording all right so here's what it looks like you can see that the distance from the stitch to the edge of this cording is approximately a half inch. That's your seam allowance when you go to sew it into the top of your cushion or whatever you might be doing with it. Now the one other thing I want to show you before we end today is how to uh, deal with this seam here. You don't have to press it or steam it or anything. What, what you do is you just merely open it like this, okay, so that it's open. Now sew until you're close to it, like so, and then come back a little bit past it, fold it over, and you just run it over. So yeah, there's a little bit of a seam, but it doesn't look too bad. There's the seam. If it bothers you, you can trim this little tail out, although it doesn't really hurt anything.